Okay, welcome to Speech Talk Live. This is episode number 53. My name is Jay Oza. I'm the host of the show. And also I'm uh, the mentor for the Coursera course, uh, Introduction to Public Speaking. Uh, myself and uh, Julie, who will introduce herself later, we've been mentors ever since the, the course went into its new format, uh, uh, on-demand format. And uh, I'm based out of uh, New Jersey. And as you can see, this is our 53rd show, and we enjoy it. It's uh, our opportunity to, uh, uh, you know, teach, learn, practice, and also support the Coursera community and a much wider community uh, uh, who are interested in developing their public uh, speaking skills. I forgot to introduce my co-host. Uh, her name is uh, Julie Wu Finkelstein. And uh, of course, as I said, she will introduce herself. So today we have uh, two, two segments. Uh, the first uh, segment is something that I have covered in the past, but I want to go a little bit more into depth. And I would like uh, Julie's uh, input into this. Uh, and what we're going to do is uh, each segment, we're going to spend about 20 minutes just having a discussion. And there is an accompanying video that goes along with uh, our discussion. So if you uh, want to watch it, uh, we have a, have a link that will uh, you can use, uh, click on it to, to, to watch the accompanying video that goes into it in more detail. Uh, and, and then the second segment uh, that uh, Julie will uh, facilitate, uh, she's going to go into, uh, she's starting a new series uh, that you'll be seeing. I think she's already started it some of the practices for success. And one of the things that she's going to talk about today is developing your bio. Uh, and she'll go into that in more detail on some ideas that she has uh, come up, come across uh, from a book that she's been reading. I think it's called The 10% Entrepreneur. So uh, this is the kind of stuff we have to do, right? We have to get ideas from and then make it our own and apply it to what we're doing. So at this point, uh, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll have Julie uh, give her intro, and then uh, we'll do a quick 90-second uh, segment where we can bring up a, a topic uh, that we want to bring up, uh, discuss, and then we'll move into our first uh, segment. So Julie, do you want to do a, a quick uh, intro before I go into my 90-second uh, segment, and then you'll do yours? Hi, good morning, Jay. Thank you so much. As you said, my name is Julie Wu Finkelstein, and my my core purpose in working on uh, work is to look for practices that combines health, happiness, and success for uh, individuals and organizations. And um, to me, existence, the whole human existence, is kind of like a three-legged stool. So we have to be healthy, and that includes being energetic. And be happy um, doesn't mean that we're content with everything, but have a baseline of satisfaction and happiness, and finally, success. Success is what helps us to reach out to the world and connect. And out of this, and this current theme is um, practices for success. And I have some free programs. I call them open source uh, that you're welcome to join. So if you want more information, please uh, email me. And Jay will put my email on the uh, video. With that, I say thank you. OK. All right, great. So uh, one of the things that uh, we uh, like to do is uh, uh, use like the 90 seconds uh, to provide some kind of an insight. And the purpose of this is that if you're in a conversation and you want to introduce a topic, you, you can't just go into it in a, you know, talk about it for five, 10 minutes. You kind of have to kind of introduce it. And then if there is an interest, the person will ask you more questions. And it's a way of uh, re discussing a topic that is more in depth. So today, for my 90 seconds, what I want to talk about is uh, TED Talk versus Google Talk. And I've been giving some thought to this. And I know that we all love TED Talks. But I think that a good model to follow for your developing your public speaking skills may be Google Talk. So let me explain. When I look at TED Talk, 
I look at TED Talk as performance speaking. Like these are the kind of speeches you would give in front of a large audience where you have a real uh, agenda that's already been set. It doesn't allow you to improvise in any way at all. These are speeches that people have rehearsed it for, you know, hundreds of hours. And when they get on the stage, they essentially are locked in to what they have already prepared. And that to me is fine for Ted, but I'm not sure how realistic it is for most of us. The one that I think is more realistic is Google Talk. Now, Google Talk is not like TED Talk. The number of people that attend a Google Talk at a Google uh, uh, headquarters or wherever are fewer, maybe dozen, a couple of dozen, depending on who the speaker is. But there, the talks are much longer, and there is an opportunity for the, the speaker to connect with the audience. So next time when you look at these look at it from that perspective which is more likely kind of speeches you're more likely to give ted talk or google talk and i will conclude that google talk are the speeches that you're more likely to give so take a look at google talk to pick up hints on how they do it okay julie go ahead thanks jay so today i want to talk about how to find your sweet spot in um working with uh, finding out what your clients want and stuff. And to me, there are several tools. One of them is probing, just kind of asking questions and see what the bounce back is. Scouting, which is looking out in the distance and finding, looking at the terrain and see what's coming. Um, looking for feedback on individual basis is kind of looking at the trees instead of the forest. And I think surveying, SurveyMonkey provides us with such a wonderful tool. Uh, but most important of all is uh, <clears throat> just do it. You know, everything you everything is a product. So in, in light of that, I'm going to create a worksheet for the bio video I, I'm done today that I will be facilitating. And the worksheet will be the product. And I think that's a wonderful way which basically experimenting, putting our product and see people's response. Because one of the things that Jay, we know is uh, sometimes people don't say what they really want because they don't really want what they want. So creating a product and putting it out there is a great way to experiment for the sweet spot. And that's it. Thanks, Jay. Yeah, I'm a little slow today because my mouse is giving me some kind of problem. I think it needs new battery, and I don't have it. <laughs> and I don't like this thing, uh, the mouse on the, 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 the touchpad. I'm not good at that. So if you're seeing me struggling a little bit, it's because something I'm having some uh, technical difficulties here. So if I can uh, figure it out. And also, I'm kind of getting back into the groove of this because we haven't done these shows like in almost uh, two weeks now. So <laughs> it just goes to show that when you don't do these things, you do you do tend to forget that uh, the, the the rhythm that you have on how to do this show. So uh, if you notice some uh, awkwardness or something that's not flowing, it's because uh, we haven't done these shows in a while. So excuses for that. But at this point, I'm going to take a, a brief pause and then we'll move into our. Uh, first uh, segment uh, that I call it the uh, the confidence competence grid. Okay, welcome back to Speech Talk Live, episode number fifty three. My name is Jay Yosa. I'm the host of the show, and my co-host is uh, Julie Wu Finkelstein. Uh, besides hosting the show, Julie and I are both uh, mentors for the uh, Coursera's. Uh, excellent course, uh, Introduction to Public Speaking, which I highly recommend uh, if you're watching this uh, to uh, take that course. It's a 10-week course, absolutely free. And as far as I'm concerned, I think it's uh, one of the best uh, courses that's been that that I've come across. And like I said, just because it's free, don't think it's not good. I think it's one of the best courses. I've taken it five times, and uh, I highly recommend you take it. So what I want to talk about is confidence. And I come across this excellent book by Tomas uh, Chamorro 
Premuzic. And uh, he has written this book on confidence uh, that I think kind of really has helped me understand many things, uh, not necessarily in something outside public speaking, but it's allowed me to really understand how, why it's difficult and how people can really become good at this skill. So he has this uh, this grid, which I'm going to explain. I wish I, I I'm going to try to get a permission from him so I could use it uh, when I'm whenever I'm presenting. Uh, I will send him an email, see if it's possible for us to use it, because he has really explained it well. And it's a quadrant. And on the left side, uh, it's competence. And on the bottom, so the, the, the vertical, uh, the horizontal axis is the competence. And the horizontal is confidence, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a grid. And he starts looking at it from the lower right grade. Okay, so the lower right is, he calls it the incompetent confident. Now, what that means is that you have low competence because, you know, on the vertical axis, you have a competence, so it's low, high, and on the confidence, it's low, high, right? That, right? So the lower right is low competence and high confidence. Now, the interesting thing is there are a lot of people out there who think they're very good at public speaking because they are socially, they speak with friends, they might be even speaking at work, but nobody's really telling them that, hey, you know, you're not coming across. They basically find some reasons to blame it on somebody or whatever, okay? Or bad luck or whatever. They're not looking at it inwardly to see maybe it's their skills that's preventing from succeeding. Uh, those people probably are not likely to be helped because they just are delusional thinking that they're too good, so they're not even going to. So they don't really fall into this lower right quadrant. The ones that are incompetent, confident are some the people with self-knowledge. So like if you're watching this and you want to improve your public speaking skill, and let's say up to this point you haven't really given much thought to it, you probably fall into that category of being an incompetent confident and what that does is that it's good that you are watching it means that you want to get some feedback now it could be feedback from i don't know whether your friend can give you a feedback but somebody and that is another problem altogether that's outside the scope of this discussion is where do you get that feedback at this point i'm assuming you're going to give yourself the feedback that you know i had this meeting and i just didn't i thought i did a good job but somehow it didn't go well and you start having some doubt that maybe it might be your communication skills. So at that point, you now are lowering your confidence and you're moving yourself into the lower uh, left uh, quadrant, which is low confidence and low competence. Now, the thing to notice here is that a lot of people remain there thinking like, oh, I'm just, I just suck at public speaking and I just don't even have confidence. Those people will remain there. They're not even going to do anything about it. But in your case, you do want to do something about it. So what you're going to do here is to improve. Now, how do you improve it? You take the Coursera course, you start talking to, find an accountable uh, accountability buddy with, like I do with Julie, who can give you some constructive feedback. You will do a 330 challenge and you're going to start becoming more and more competent. So as you're becoming more and more competent, you're now going to move up the grid into the upper left quadrant. And the upper left quadrant, you are now increasing your competence. And you may at this point have some, you know, you, you may try to be a perfectionist because you don't know how good you really are. Even though you're getting some good feedback from people saying, hey, you know, your speech was excellent. You did a great job and you're developing more competence, but you're still not confident because, you know, you're coming from an area where you had high confidence, then you had low confidence. So you're not sure whether at this point you are necessarily, you, you will have that confidence. The bad thing here that can happen is you may try to become too much of a perfectionist. And at that point, you will start feeling insecure. And that could be a bad thing because what that would mean is that even though you are competent, people are giving you all sorts of validation that you are an excellent speaker, but you just don't have the confidence and you may 
prevent yourself from seizing different opportunities that may be available. So yes, you can hide your insecurities, which is good because that will make you improve more and more. But at some point, you have to start moving into the the fourth quadrant, the upper uh, uh, right quadrant. That's where you want to be, which is you have high competence and you have high confidence. That's where you want to be. That's when you start enjoying communicating, giving speeches, because you have put in the effort, you're competent, and also with all the feedback you're getting, you're developing that confidence. So the confidence is a result of your competence here. The, the, the thing you have to be careful in the fourth quadrant is you do not want to become too complacent. Because some people get like, ah, I did a great speech. People loved it. I don't need to work on it anymore. I don't need to you know, practice more, learn new techniques and this and that. And what that could potentially do is you'll start losing your edge and you'll drop back into that uh, a lower right quadrant where you will start losing your competence and you will have your high confidence so you at that point what you want to do is you need to have self knowledge you need to have an accountability buddy or have a coach to make sure that you remain at that upper right quadrant so this is a sort of like a, I go this go into this in a little bit more detail in my accompanying video but I just wanted to kind of show you how this thing works and this is explained really well by this author, Tomas uh, Chamorro Pramuzic, in his book, The Confidence, which kind of helped me explain how this whole thing works, rather than people constantly saying, like, you know, do the power pose and that'll do the trick. Yeah, that might help you, but it's not sustainable. You know, it's not really sustainable. It, it, it might be something you can add to a, one of the tools, but that alone isn't going to do it you really need to understand this grid on how this thing works. And then start, certainly, like if you're going and giving a speech, maybe doing some power poses or, or, or something like that, or self-talk, all that could be helpful. But that alone isn't going to lead to you giving an excellent speech. It's not sustainable. So I just wanted to kind of explain this, uh, this confidence, competence, and this grid really helps you ex understand it much better. So at this point, I'll ask uh, Julie to see uh, what she thinks of this, uh, uh, this, this, this confidence versus competence grid. Thanks, Jay. So I really like your speech. I really like the idea of the grid. Um, I, I, I think the one of the things I really like about it is the, um, you know, we're both systems analysts, so the analytical aspect of being able to kind of self-diagnose and then also you can recommend action plans. Um, so the low uh, was very interesting that he started off with the low competence, high confidence area. And I, I like the idea that um, you have a suggestion for each of the quadrants and I believe um, as we migrate from the uh, lower left, which is low competence, low confidence, to the high competence, high confidence, uh, your suggestion is once we get there, we have to keep at it. And actually, uh, the baseline changes, right? Because uh, now that we're so good, we can drop back down. And I think you mentioned that in your speech, you drop back down to uh, low competence. Uh, and then you can rework that. So that could be a very dynamic process. Um, so I, I thought it was interesting that it's really like a methodology. You know, it's a way of looking at things over and over again, repeating the wheel. The only thing I would be curious about is, um, you know, when you talk about confidence, uh, that there may be something else. Is confidence about uh, yourself versus confidence about your skill level. So like I could have, like for myself, for example, I have pretty low confidence in my uh, public speaking, as you well know, especially in the area of online presentations. But I have pretty high confidence in my ability to learn. So, um, so it was, uh, was that matrix that really helped me to practice and started off at a low competence. And um, actually, I had a high confidence of my speak at one point. And um, 
as you know, I thought I was a pretty good communicator when I came on this uh, came on the program doing this speech talk live with you. So it was your feedback and my own just direct experience with public speaking that actually shifted me into the lower left corner. And hopefully I'm slowly climbing up to the high confidence and high competence level. But then I drop down because there's always more things to learn. So I think this is a very uh, interesting uh, matrix. And I imagine from what you say is you took it for uh, public speaking, but it actually applies to any, it's an approach that can be applied in any kind of skill set we want to develop. And I, I really appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah, so. So I, I would say at this point, uh, uh, you and I are probably on the upper left quadrant where we are developing our competence because we've been doing this for some time, but we are probably able to hide our insecurities when we are, at least for time being, because uh, you know until you know we start giving a lot of speeches. Uh, in public and we get that well then that's when I would say that we would both be in the upper right quadrant so at this point we probably have the competence but we probably don't have the high confidence and that's not because we don't have the competence it's just that we haven't been in front of that type of a, a situation stage where we have given speeches and done it often enough so that we've gotten some validation. Once we do that, then we are going to slowly move from that upper or left quadrant to the upper right quadrant. And then upper right quadrant, we are like, now let's say after you get into that upper right quadrant, we're just saying, ah, Jay, you know what? Uh, thanks, but I don't have more, I don't have any more time for Speech Talk Live. I'm pretty much set now. You know, I got paid gigs all over the place. This is too much. Uh, too much work for me for that. So at that point, you're going to focus on what you're doing, and you could eventually start dropping down into that upper, like you mentioned, lower right quadrant, and you become an incompetent confident. Or you could be so delusional that you don't even feel that. You think, like, I am so good, I don't even need to worry. Because that incompetent and confident is there because you want to get some feedback. And in, if you become so cocky that you're saying, I don't need feedback, I've achieved that nirvana now, I'm in that fourth quadrant. But these things are not static, okay? They move. <laughs> the, you know, things change. Your audience changes. So you've got to really, you know, keep your game up all the time. So I, I would say that uh, when you started taking this course, I, I think you said it right, that at some point, and you should kind of go through your journey, that you were at one point incompetent and confident, and then after you left work, you suddenly realized that I needed to up my game, and that means that you're trying to bring the the confidence and comp you're aligning them, right? That's the whole point of this grid. You, you either you're aligning at the low end and you're aligning at the high end, right? At the fourth quadrant and at the, uh, the the lower left quadrant. At the lower left quadrant means that now you're basically saying, I need a lot of help. I need to work on it. And that's when we tell people, you got to take this Coursera course, you got to practice, you got to do, do the 330 challenge. And they start moving up, but they're still developing the skill but they're not closing the confidence gap that happens in the fourth quadrant so I, I like the way this works and I think you're right that this applies not just to public speaking so in, in, in your case what you mentioned is in your public speaking I would say that you're probably at this point unless you start giving a lot of public speeches in front of a lot of people you're definitely in the low uh, upper left quadrant and slowly the arrow is pointing towards the right Okay, the question is how quickly you can get there. Uh, as far as your learning, your learning skill definitely is probably on the upper right quadrant because you're doing all the right things and you're not becoming cocky. You want to learn more. You're reading more stuff. You're doing a lot of stuff. So I think on the learning side, you and I are probably, not probably, you and I are definitely in the upper right quadrant. So you're right. You've got to isolate each skill and place yourself. Which quadrant do you really belong in? And, and then you can make the, the improvement. Any, any closing thoughts before we uh, move on to our next segment? Uh, no, this is great. And I, you know, I invite you to maybe produce a worksheet and share that with us. 
Yeah, what I'm going to try to do is uh, I'm going to send an email to Tomas directly and tell him, like, look, we really like it. We'd like to use it uh, and make it available to people if he's okay with it. And he's a professor, so I'm not sure whether he would have any objection to us uh, using this grid. And maybe we can customize it for the public speaking skill, learning skill, and you can even do it for the, the, the thing that you're working working on. So I will uh, reach out to Tomas and perhaps even if he's interested, uh, even get him on the show to talk about this. Okay, so at this point, uh, we will uh, close out this uh, segment and take a, a brief pause. Okay, welcome back to Speech Talk Live, episode number 53. My name is Jay Oza. I'm the host of the show, and my co-host is uh, Julie Wu Finkelstein. Uh, in the second segment that uh, Julie is going to facilitate, it's part of her continuing series on what are some of the practices that we can follow to uh, uh, for success. And today she's going to talk about. She has recorded two videos: a discussion and a and a practical video on how to develop your bio. And she's going to go into this in more detail. You can watch the video, but I'd like you to kind of talk about it if some people don't have time to go back and watch different videos. And in this one, we can, we're can we going to have a discussion around uh, uh, this methodology and see how it benefits people, uh, how to do it, and it, it, you know, is this, we'll let Julie talk about it. So Julie, at this point, uh, I will, uh, uh, turn it over to you to uh, explain this uh, concept uh, to, to to me and to our audience. Thanks, Jay. Um, so, as as I mentioned in the introduction, my whole goal is looking for practices that help people to be healthy, happy, and successful. And the reason why I think that is those are the three legs that creates our human existence, uh, at least um, based on my teachings and my experience. Uh, experiences with uh, Rinzai Buddhism, which I'll go into another time. The other thing is, uh, I think as I talk to my friends who are entrepreneurs, that there's, there's a paradox going on, right? The, the world is growing so large, and so we have to make our impression of people right away. And people have to, in the, you know, in the 50th of a second, um, they, they, they make an impression of who we are. So in the first few seconds, um, maybe 30 seconds, they make the decision whether are we in that, are we in that connection or are we out. So in this paradox then, um, how do you present yourself? You know, um, we talk about the resume a lot, and a bio is different than a resume. Um, a and I have done, um, an earlier video, which I haven't shared yet, is using uh, uh, inspired by Jay's technique of uh, hacking, and I call that hacking a bio, and uh, I'll share that another time. Today I was inspired by um, author Patrick McGuinness. Patrick is the founder, the uh, inventor of the man FOMO and FOBO, and you can look that up. Um, so. I think the core to making an impression and sustaining that impression is actually to be to really show who we are. So we all people uh, who is doing job interview or, or you know in public speaking circles, the idea of connectivity and likability is very and credibility is very important, right? So people connect to people. People don't connect to what. Um, what they do, which is part of the interview reasoning is you want to talk about how you help people. But I, I'm suggesting that we go deeper than that and that um, we show what we do but we also show who we are. And that uh, uh, no matter what we do, our branding goes from a deep core of our identity before we even talk about uh, what we do. So instead of we always live with, as Jay does, I help people to win in speeches, right? Um, but somewhere in there, I would, you know, and Jay, I would just use my, 
my own impression of Jay is Jay is an excellent teacher and a coach because he really understands the business needs and he understands the individual skills and all of that he analyzes and presents a very customized solution. So I will say some way in Jay's speech I will put forth that identity element of being an analyst, of being an objective analyst. So I help people to win speech because I'm, I really enjoy learning and analyzing and figuring out a unique solution. So my, 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 my ability to really see things clearly comes up with a practical and effective solution. So you're not just presenting your set, uh, what you do, you're presenting who you are and how what makes you unique. Um, let's see. So at this point in the video, as you know, Jay, I have two. One is what is a the first one is a discussion. What is a bio? How is it different from a resume? And why do a bio? And the second one is um, a documentation, a presentation of the way Patrick McGinnis suggests that we do a bio. And I give my own uh, conclusion statement. Uh, with this, I'm going to turn over to you, Jay, and ask some questions. But before I do that, I have three titles in terms of this project I'm doing. I'm wondering if you would like to give me some feedback. So the first one is authentic branding. The second one is branding through identity. And the third one is identity-driven identity -driven authentic branding. None of them sound quite right, but I'm going to just kick off and get your feedback on the name. Okay, and with this I'll turn over to you for both feedback of the speeches and anything else you have to say. Thank you. All right, Julie, thanks a lot. And by the way, I think the speeches were excellent. Uh, I think uh, this five minute trying to trying to compress your speech in five minutes is really, I think, your sweet spot. That's, uh, I think you're kind of, you're mastering this concept of uh, d doing this practice of uh, doing your speech in, in five minutes. I think it's, you're focused and it comes across when I'm seeing these speeches. Unfortunately, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> My speeches start out five minutes and they end up uh, three times as long. So I have to somehow, uh, and, and part of it is it's that I'm practicing kind of different things, uh, but I like what you're practicing, trying to get these speeches. You, you're kind of mastering the five-minute speech con uh, practice. So I think that's good. Uh, the the other thing is uh, uh, these three titles that you just, uh, I'll, I'll just address it since you asked me that. The three titles, authentic branding, branding through identity, and then identity-driven something. I missed the last one. I, I think... Uh, I think you should uh, make it even simpler than that uh, because these words are used and people don't really know what they really are after a while. So my question to you is what exactly are you trying to, if you have to explain to somebody without using those words, how would you explain it? And the reason I'm saying is that uh, th these words are, to me, sound more buzzwordy, okay? Like authenticity. That word gets used a lot. The word branding gets used a lot. And I just think that you may want to work a little harder to see exactly what you're what you're really trying to uh, accomplish. Like, look at it from the person's point of view. What does he benefit? What does he get from this? Like, what will he get? Will he like? I think what you said in the beginning is that you're trying to. This whole practice is to make uh, people healthy, happy, and successful, right? But at the end, what does that what does that lead to? What does that lead to? And I think uh, this is what you're doing. But I think what you want to focus on, or what I would focus on, is where do they end up? I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, authentic branding, branding through identity, uh, that's what you're doing. That's part of your uh, value that you provide. But at the end, what does that, what do they become? Like, how does it change them? So we may want to think about that. We can brainstorm that further. The, the other question is, uh, this bio is, is like, like how, how is this, like, where would you use it? Is this something that you just have to know yourself? Uh, is this more for self-knowledge so that when you are talking to a person, you're not thinking suddenly like, wait a second, is it sort of almost like 
taking your not your re re resume but it's more the resume is your professional uh, information right this is more than professional personal your interest is this something so that you are bringing like completely a 360 degree view of yourself not just your because resume is professional then the other one social you're just about your interest here you're trying to say okay i have my personal interest here's my background here's this this and i have it all integrated to make me who i am so that i'm presenting a complete view of who i am that to to convey that to somebody is, is that the purpose of this because i'm still not clear on mm -hmm. how do i actually use it in a social situation or perhaps even i think what you're saying is that this is something you have it once and you can use it in in different situations so you don't have to reinvent the wheel over and over again so he'll help me understand that a little better okay thanks a lot so i'm going to give you three different perspectives <laughs> um and then maybe maybe then we can talk about some more so i'm going to talk about what patrick mcginnis uses it for what i had used it for in my career and what i think is possible to be useful so in terms of patrick mcginnis he is his book is about being a pat a part-time entrepreneur so basically he needs to network with people and seek opportunities where he can contribute and get either equity or profit sharing on entrepreneurial activities. So um, the bio is basically his calling card. Um, it's how he presents himself to potential prospects. Okay. Uh, the difference between a bio and a resume, which is discussed there, is that uh, the bio is for you to tell your story, what you want to highlight. A resume is a map of your history, okay? Um, so it's basically for networking purposes, and he suggests that uh, you put it in an email when you're introducing yourself to others, put it in LinkedIn and other public medias, okay? When I, was, uh, when I had my own consulting company, I was a partner, so I didn't really have a resume as part of my information packet for the company, but all the partners had a bio. Each of the partners had a, maybe, um, let's see, um, three paragraphs about each of the partners. We have five partners. So again, that's kind of like my calling card. Uh, before they even talk to me, they can find out who I'm about. If they want to engage me, then I will share the uh, I will share my resume with them. So the re resume is a follow up. A bio could also go into a cover letter, I believe. So this is this is my experience. So now let me talk a little about how I think the bio as a potential could be used. I think a bio should be um, roughly a one page or half page summary of all the things you want to present. And out of and that should be a core uh, instrument, a core document. Out of that should come all your uh, narration. So uh, you can identify your key skill sets, your core values, your, um, your talents or key characteristics. And in addition to um, the narrative itself, and I think every time you you want to, and this is a workshop I'll be doing, you want to construct elevator speeches, for example, um, out of this bio. You want to, uh, when you shake hands with somebody, all that should be come from one consistent source. It's integrated. Um, when you need a, when you do a job interview, you want to reflect your characteristic, and it's sourced from the bio. It, it's convenient to have it written, but I can certainly see a bio being a part of a public speaking introduction by yourself or someone else. I can certainly see it in a job interview, or even an elevator speech that you, prefer, you prepare, or networking meetings, little snippets of something you want to share. So for me, the bio as a concept is a part of a strategy to presenting your identity so that you're consistent um, 
whoever you are, who your skills are. Because, um, and I'll just wrap this up, I'll turn it back to you, is um, in the Nasbitt's uh, book, uh, Megatrends, there's a section that's called high tech and high touch. And there is the paradox of something that is impersonal, which is technology. You really want to make it uh, cozy, soft touch, so uh, you know, personable. And I think this paradox of high touch and high tech is what's happening in the global environment, particularly in the environment, in the online environment. Uh, connections are in, in, impersonal. You have to stand out in a large pool of population. There's impermanence too, but somehow you have to create a, a permanent relationship. And I think your identity and a strong, clear bio and how you present gives you opportunity to craft messages that makes it really clear and yet personable. Yeah, that makes uh, that, that that makes sense. So we have about uh, another four minutes, so we can start wrapping this up. Uh, yeah, I think this is a, a an excellent uh, exercise. Now that you explained it, and uh, after watching the the video, <clears throat> I think uh, like especially for anybody, because we do a lot in our lives. I think what this will allow you to do is to start thinking about what you're all about, as far as you know where you've come from all the different things you have done and it kind of ha will help you understand where you want to go because like i think one of the things you just mentioned is uh, something that i like to teach i like to analyze and all of these getting these feedback is also kind of important uh, from people that you trust so they can help you define yourself as far as what is your real bio because if this is how people are seeing you then you want to make sure that that's how you are bringing yourself, uh, you're presenting yourself rather than something that you're not. Uh, otherwise, people will immediately see inconsistency on who you are and what you're saying. So you want to, again, it comes down to this uh, aligning who you are and what you're saying. And I think this bio will help you do that. So I think this is not that simple. I, it's something where you need to really think about where you write down and it's kind of probably iterative where you have to constantly keep tweaking it as you are developing more skill developing and, and how does it fit into who you really are so that way you don't end up doing things that are going to be you know waste of time you're going to pursue things but also I think the main thing what you said in the beginning was that people today do not have a lot of time they're going to make a decision in a snap and if you're kind of not sure, then it's better to find it's better to find out quickly whether you are somebody that is compatible with how they who they are, so they at least understand it, rather than finding out later that you're not what they thought you were. So I think this helps you in all situations, not just necessarily in social, but at work and even in in any kind of interaction. That if you can tell people who you are then it will make them much more comfortable and who knows it could lead to other possibilities so I, I like this idea but I need to actually uh, go through the whole exercise and uh, and maybe you can help me with that definitely so, I will so be happy to help you with that thanks Jay. right so at this point we'll uh, close out the show and uh, do you have any parting thoughts uh, on some of the things we already discussed uh, that you have now suddenly said hey I forgot to add this this is your chance <laughs> to add any last things, whether it's on the confidence uh, competence grade or uh, whether it has to do with uh, developing your bio and executing that bio. I think that there's another speech that I think probably is needed here is how do you actually execute this? How yes. to develop it and how to execute it? Yes, so, I, uh, well, actually, the, the, um, the, the, the action piece of it is a way to do it, but I have other ones too. And I think. Um, as with everything, we can always complicate a cup of coffee, right? So we need to find the right um, the right amount of effort for the right amount of result and the time we have available. And that's why I like your hacking idea so much. So um, maybe next week I'll provide on how to hack an identity, how to hack a bio. Thank you, Jay.
Okay, and Julie, thanks a lot. And uh, at this point, we're going to close out the show. So I always like to end with saying that you know you are how you speak. So that's that's what we focus on on the show. And I believe speaking is, uh, and this is again ties into what uh, Julie just said that. Yes, you can develop your bio, but at some point you're gonna to have to communicate that bio. So there are different aspects of this. There is a development of the bio, then there is the whole execution, and then how do you present that bio to somebody? So there is a lot involved here. Developing a bio is great, but then how do you communicate? You know, people are not going to want you to just talk about who you are. You gotta know exactly which piece applies, what is the overall theme. The, what is the main message of who you are? What is your whole identity so that you can communicate? And a lot of that is part of speaking. And uh, if you do not, uh, you could spend a lot of time developing your bio, but if you can't convey it in, a, in, in an impactful way, clear, plain, direct, impactful way, then it's not going to achieve your objective. So part of it is that uh, you do need to develop this uh, skill of, of speaking. So uh, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, uh, we'll include our email, uh, both my and Julie, and you can reach out to us uh, if you have any, you know, any kind of help you need. Uh, uh, and like I said, we, uh, we, we mentor this course, and we're here to help you. Okay, so at this point, uh, we will uh, end the show, and we'll see you uh, for the next uh, episode number 54. So thank you for watching. Okay. You want to take a quick break, Julie? Or? Yeah, let's take a quick break. Okay, and I'll Come be right back. back. Thanks. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I think uh, this uh, two segment works out a lot better. Yeah. I so agree. that way the, the show doesn't drag on, and uh, that way, you know, uh, I, I can do one segment and you can do one segment. So that way we are both uh, bringing something unique to the to the to the show. Okay. Uh, like I said, if you uh, sometimes decided to. Um just do one segment. That's fine too. I can, you know, just give me five minutes to. Let's let's stick to okay. two for now. Okay. And then if it gets to the point where if we have a one in depth segment, I think what this does is that uh, uh, we take uh, so that it doesn't. We'll see. Let's just stick with yeah. two now. And okay. Then, I'm just saying. Because I think what to... we could do is we can cut it down. Like right now, my goal was like today we ended. We did a 45 minute show, right? We ended at around 10:45, and mm -hmm. 
And if we can like make it shorter, we can do like two short 15 minute segments. A one yeah. first one could be 20 minutes and the second one could be shorter like that. So Yeah, I, I'm, I'm more than happy with 15 minutes. So yeah, let's do that. Let's do a 20 and a 15, okay? Yeah, yeah. So we can, like the first one could be a little bit longer that has more depth and the, that uh, and then we can do a shorter one uh, for, for 15 because a lot of it we have accompanying video and all that. Because I right. just want to kind of maintain that uh, consistency because once you don't do it, because today I was kind of got off to a little slow start because I haven't done this now for two weeks. So uh, I think it's important to at least uh, could keep it consistent so that there's a lot of content. Because uh, this idea about the confidence, competence grid, it's important to get it out because that way it's it's a uh, it's on youtube it's uh, available to people for the, the coursera course and that they can get something out of it and that's part of our value to this uh, community yes all right so let's uh, so i'll update you so this is what we're going to do right you're going to update me on your uh, your your interview i've been uh, watching that oh yes the, okay so yeah me an update on Everett where that's going because I know you've been sending me a lot of stuff and lately I've been busy with my uh, trying to get my book done yeah I'm, no worries I've been working on my sixth draft and I'm fr I printed it all out so I'm kind of going through with a fine-tooth comb and this is gonna be my last my in deep involvement after that I'm gonna get an editor so I'm gonna update you on that okay. so you're gonna give me an update on your uh, interview with Everett what do you want to do first you want to talk about your book first Okay, yeah. I'll, uh, okay, yeah, so go let's ahead and do your book. On, let's just focus on those two things. Uh, yeah. So I have the the sixth draft uh, done, and I'm right now. You can see it. It's right here. I don't know if you can see it. It's, oh, beautiful. Uh, I am going. Uh, I'm going to go through that with a with a fine tooth comb, and this will be sort of my final in, in, input into this, and uh, it'll be about two hundred pages. The, the title of it is the following. I tackling with this title, I kind of got this, and I just wanted to run it past you. So the you know I used to before the title was called "Become a Confident Speaker," but then I realized that the book is really more than that. That confident is one thing, but then it does more than that, right? Like if you if you're doing these type of shows, then at that point you're more than just confident. So I kind of got this idea from that uh, show uh, from that. Uh, Toy Story, you know, that Buzz Lightyear or somebody who says, you know, to infinity and beyond, right? <laughs> no, I, I don't. But I mean, so, so, so I'm calling this book To Confident Speaking and Beyond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the title I'm kind of uh, t t t t thinking about, that uh, it sounds a little different and uh, it, it, it kind of addresses what the book is. And it's a little... It's a little playful too, rather than the traditional like become a confident speaker. Like you know, this is more like playful. So I'm kind of uh, thinking of uh, going with this, and uh, and then I underneath I put step by step step guide to develop and master public speaking skills for success in both life and work. So uh, I, once I go through this with a fine tooth comb, I will uh, send it to you. Uh, the one thing that uh, I have done here is that I, I'm going to use your forward in a different way. I'm not going to use it in this book because I'm going to use it more as more like a testimonial. And sure. it's, it, instead of forward, uh, because uh, I think for this book, I'm deciding not to go with a forward. I'm going to use, instead of the forward, I'm going to use the author's note to kind of explain why I've written this book in the first place. That's great. And the book has the following parts. Uh, the first part is just goes over uh, public uh, speaking. You know, the, the thing is, the way I'm looking at it is that I need to then, if I were to give a speech, the first part alone could be a 20 minute speech on, on public speaking. Then, so the first part goes into public speaking, and then I talk about what exactly is what makes public speaking so complex, which is a kind of a long section, but I've kept it in there because I feel it's important for people to understand it rather than just start. Uh, the practice part is not that difficult, right? The practice part of this is not that difficult. And so that's the, the, the first part. The second part goes into becoming a confident speaker, and that includes developing a goals video. Uh, taking the Coursera course and what I try to do in this is that I focus on the four speeches so I don't try to duplicate uh, uh, the, the course 
uh, the, the the main the main thing that I'm doing in this book, like so, so, so if somebody were to ask me, like, so what is this book? Why is this book different? And what I'm saying in my author's note is that that public speaking has been taught since the ancient Greeks to the present day. Okay, so public speaking, I'm not breaking any new ground here. The ground that I am breaking here or doing something different here is that I'm taking things that are already out there. Like instruction is already out there. The Coursera course is the instruction. That is high quality, free, very well done. I'm not going to try to duplicate that, right? So I'm taking something that's already out there. Instruction is out there. I'm also taking advantage of all the tools that are out there, like uh, like a smartphone, PC camera, I mean, a uh, camera on a PC, uh, YouTube, so that's out there. Those are all the tools. What I'm saying is that I'm just going to give you with those tools available to you. Here are some of the practices that you can use to develop the skill on your own. So, so that is my value add of this book, that these tools are already out there, that unless you put in the practice and you can do this on your own, you too can develop uh, becoming, you can become a confident speaker and beyond the way I have. And I'm using myself as an example. So that's the main idea of the book. So like it, it, that's what I discuss in my author's note. Like if somebody asks you like, like what is this book about? Uh, and I'm like, uh, okay, public speaking is not something. Like somebody said, well, public speaking has been around for so long. Why would they want to take read your book? And I'm saying, well, what my book does is that, that a lot of these tools are already out there. They're free. They're very good. And if you're interested, you can do it yourself. You don't need to go and spend a lot of money or or you or join Toastmasters or any of that stuff. You, all of this is available to you. You can record a video, get a feedback, you can do self-feedback, or you can get feedback from your accountability buddy or somebody else and develop this skill like you and I have. That's exactly how we have done it. So we're good examples of that. Okay, so then the part three goes into uh, once you become a confident speaker, if you want to go beyond that. And there I talk about taking the Coursera course again to get, gain more insight, learn how to uh, adapt your speech for different situations. So time, venue, etc. audience, whether it's entertainment, content, etc. Uh, then, uh, then I go into start uh, doing the speeches in live in front of people. Another thing they can do is do what we have done uh, is to uh, start a show like YouTube. Anybody can do this, right? This is not difficult to do. You can just uh, start a show with somebody and uh, be consistent. And then I talk about that if you're at that stage, the next two phases are if you want to become a professional speaker where you actually get paid to become to be a professional speaker. And then the ultimate is how do you become an like what is the qualities of an inspirational speaker so what makes somebody an inspirational speaker and that's the ultimate so so that's like the third part the fourth part of the book is just feedback and assessment because that's very important right otherwise how do you get better so you, uh, you can i teach about how they can do their own self feedback and also how they can get feedback from others so that's a little bit of a lengthy section because i think feedback is very important uh, for improvement and then there, the last section, part five, originally this was in the appendix, but I moved it out of the appendix and put it into part five, is uh, the speech itself. And this is not that long. I don't really, because this book is not about the speech. This is about developing the skill. But at some point, you have to give a speech. So I have a my checklist, 33-point checklist in there, and talk about that if you have to give a speech, go through this checklist that helps you prepare before the speech, during the speech, and what you need to do after the speech. And then I have appendix that shows some of the, uh, all the speeches that I worked on, on the Coursera course, uh, the speech talk live, and the, uh, the 330 challenge. So that's, that's how the book is uh, structured, right? So now. you didn't really delete anything then, right? No, I, I did, I did. The whole speech part, the speech section is gone on, on so the, there was a whole book uh, on, public uh, the speech that I had like you know hacking the hacking and all that is gone oh okay hacking a message hacking a speech hacking a performance all that is going to be in the next book uh, for the speech I had to remove that otherwise my book would get to be over you know three three hundred and then I had a whole section on how to become a lifetime speaker 
So that okay. added another like 100 pages. So I removed essentially more than 200 pages from this book. Uh, and, and, and now it's, uh, and to me, this is a good one to start with because this is where I have the most confidence. Okay. The speech one, I don't have the confidence right now to lead with, I think your opinion was to lead with that first, but I didn't feel like I had the confidence because that's something that I have not gone out and given a lot of public speeches. Once I do that, then I would be more comfortable to come out with that book. I'm sort of in that left quadrant where I have high competence, but low confidence. So until I move into that right quadrant, I'm going to kind of, this one, I feel like I have the high confidence and high competence. Okay. So it made sense to come out with this first. And then once I start getting more engagement, I'll start moving myself into that right upper right quadrant and I can then come out with the book, which is actually not a bad way to do books <laughs> where you are in that quadrant. Yeah. So suddenly I just thought of that, you know, that that's, that makes sense that that's where I am because uh, right now the speech part, if I were to come out with it, I, even though everything there makes sense, like you have even validated it with the hacking and messaging and performance. But wow. personally, I just don't have that confidence right now to go out and talk about it. Right. Well, that sounds great. It still yeah. sounds a little bit complicated. But I think it's great. I mean, yeah, I'm simplifying. Uh, I just kind of went through it a little fast, quickly. But like I said, once I go through this, I will send a. I need to go through some some. Uh, I need to go through it before I send you the copy of the uh, the draft of the the sixth draft. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks a lot. This was a yeah. big milestone because at this point, yeah, the book is not going to change much now. Good. I'm, part, I'm pretty much locked in at this point. So at this point, uh, the previous one. I think I, I did have too much. Now I think I've got a much better focus and I think I, I, can, I can explain why this book makes sense. Previously, I wasn't able to because like, hey, you got this here, you got this here. And that was a good exercise. It has taken a little bit longer, but now I can understand it that my focus is now pre primarily on developing the skill. And that's what I think this book does. And I can yeah. kind of, uh, I can stand behind it. Previously, it... <laughs> Previously, I was kind of all over the map in a sense like, well, you can develop the skill, then you can give a speech, and he can become a lifetime speaker. And all these are two, three different things. Some people struggle with just developing the skill. So I wanted to make sure that I gave its weight separately rather than just, you know, and I do cover the speech part, but that's not the main focus here. All right. Okay. So uh, that's the book. Uh, uh, we can talk about your thing now. Uh, okay. Yeah. So why don't you update me on where you are with that? Okay, so I, I'll just give you my vision piece first. Um, so the way I, you know, I, I'm doing this whole thing on identity, right? And um, instead of like writing a book about it and being clear about it, for me, uh, doing something is a is an easier way for me to um, experiment with the idea. So the interview, in terms of uh, what I hope to do is to really help people craft an identity, a bio essentially, through interviewing them. So it won't be like a written paragraph about bio, but it will be a way for them to talk about themselves and their work. Um, so out of that, uh, they can you know, they can use that to create the bio. Um, so it's all part of this larger thing of identity project, okay? Um, as I've written to you, I see it now as a th three or four step, I think four step process. Some of it, of, of course, it's, uh, there's an uh, iteration. The first one is to uh, preparation. Um, is basically I give them I give them an outline which is I'm working together and then they they gather they they fill in basically um, we have a meeting an online meeting and basically to cover the agenda and to get to know each other right kind of uh, feel each other out uh, what's important and so that's a preparation that's stage one. Stage two is a dress re is a rehearsal. We'll tape it, but it's totally um, it's understand that it's basically a rehearsal. 
So we go through the agenda and then we refine it. And then the third one is the actual paping, right? In the fact like we could go through multiple rehearsals, but there's gonna be a final copy. So I'm imagining just one dress rehearsal, and then the last one is a postmortem. Production and postmortem. So in the production, um, they discuss what they want to release. Um, you know, I'll help them publicize the re the avenues I have, um, and they can take. They can of course get the official copy, and they can do whatever they want, and then a post mortem on how this can be improved, how this whole process can be improved, um, and hopefully. If this works, I actually have a workshop, right? I can do this in a workshop format even, or a panel of interviews. Um, do you want to speak to that first before I go on? Yeah, okay, so <clears throat> here's my suggestion. This is your show, so you need to lay the ground rules up front and you don't want to give up your editorial control here. Now, what that means is that if you're already discussing uh, what what the agenda is and how it's going to, it's a, it, to tell them it's a, it's, a, it's a raw footage, okay? This is going to be a raw footage and you don't want to spend a lot of time. I'm not, it's up to you. I'm not going to say what you should do here. But what I'm trying to do is that you don't want to create more work for yourself. So tell them, listen, this is going to be a conversational piece, and we will record it. And then, uh, like, for example, when we did the thing with Catherine, I didn't go back to her and saying, hey, uh, are, are you okay with this? Once she, once she recorded it, then it became almost like it's official because you got to lay the ground rules that once we go live, then it's raw. It's gonna be. It, it is gonna be as is. You know, you can't go back and saying, ah, you know, I didn't say this well. I didn't say that well. Otherwise, they're gonna nitpick, and you're gonna go crazy. And I don't think that's what you. If, if, if they should know what they want to say when they come on the show, right? They can't just say, well, I should not have said that. Well, then you shouldn't have said it, right? I mean, these are. This is like a. They gotta treat this like a real show. If it's uh, if it's, live, it's it's gonna be a raw. To tell them that. The, the one version is always going to be raw. The raw is as it is. I can then take snippets of it, and I have the right to take snippets of it and, and, and make that. Like what I do with the Speech Talk Live, I take the discussion parts and make it separate. You have the right to do that. But once the show is recorded, you get the, the raw piece, you own it. You, you completely, that's, that's yours. That doesn't, they have no say as far as what gets on the YouTube or not. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to go crazy, and I don't think you really want to do that. All that stuff, they should know what the, what the agenda is and what you're going to cover. And again, all of it cannot, this is a conversational. This is not well scripted. So you, one thing you want to not get into is that these are the ideas. doesn't mean that it's going to stick to that 100%. They have a right to say that... Uh, that uh, th this is not something I feel comfortable to. I mean, you're not going to go completely off the, you know, you're going to be on the edges, okay, on what you're talking about. But uh, what you don't want to do is uh, you don't want it to come across like it is so scripted where everything is like you're reading the question one after another and they've been already, they get the idea of these are the topics we're going to cover. And then there will always be a follow-up based on what they say. So then it looks like it's very interactive. Mm -hmm. So like when we do our show, I don't, we don't do a pre pre show on what we're going to say. I basically send you the video. We talk about it. I have no idea what you're going to say. You know, I, you don't tell me, Jay, this is what I'm going to say. Is this okay? It, it comes out. That's, just, that's why it's got to be uh, interactive. There has to be, otherwise it's going to look too scripted and it's going to lose its, uh, 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 that spontaneity and uh, authenticity. So uh, I, I just think that you got to know what your voice, what kind of voice do you want it to come across? 
Julie as somebody who's having a conversation with somebody who is interesting, or Julie somebody who is like uh, uh, told by some producer, Julie, I want you to go in and ask these questions that we have written down and smile as much as you can to make it look like, you know, because you're pretty or articulate and everything. So that way the audience love you, you know, that, that's, you got to know what, you got to know what voice you want to, uh, what voice you want to come across to your audience. Right now, that could be just me, but <laughs> that's what you want. And I think you have the personality because one thing is that you don't want your personality to not come through. So mm -hmm. you, you, you got to say, look, and so like, for example, when, when you go to people and, uh, and you, you got to know that here's my objective. This is why I'm having you on the show. My show is to help people. Uh, so let's just take this uh, person. I don't know who he is. Uh, I think you keep mentioning his name, Everett o Ogawa. O yeah. Ogawa, is that Ogawa, right? So if I went to Everett, I need to know why I'm putting Everett on this show. What is it that he has that will help my audience? Uh, and remember, your focus again is this: healthy, happy, and successful, right? Mm -hmm. Where does o Everett fit in that'll help your audience achieve that? Healthy, happy, and successful. He's a he's a guy who invented the twelve stretches, and he's actually uh, working on uh, a new program. Uh, um, with his girlfriend, he he's an amazing person, and he he's basically my teacher. And I want part of my job for this, and I appreciate everything you're saying. I'm taking notes. You're recording this, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So part of my goal for to do this interviews is to help people become more uh, this uh, become more visible in the online environment. Uh, okay, okay. So, so, so let me just stop you there. You got several objectives here. Okay, so, okay, that's a separate objective. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's separate. No, the that's a core objective. Uh, no, the, the 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 main objective I thought was to help the, your audience become healthy, happy, and successful. That's no, your... no, no, no. Uh, I mean, yes, I will. I will interview people who will help the audience become okay that's a good point so for my goal is both it's to help the audience become healthy no that's a baseline H happy everything I do is that no okay see the, the it does, it's not wait 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 it's not contradictory because this this person, Ever Ogawa, is someone who pro produces uh, programs and services that helps people to be in the context of happy, healthy, and successful. But the reason why I'm doing this is uh, basically uh, help profile the people. I mean, yeah, but but that that's that's what you call okay. That's up to th they're coming on because they want to enhance their profile. See, yeah. you already have, like, for example, if we do a show, if we're interviewing people to help others with their public speaking, like with, with Catherine, how she did her speech, right? I am not specifically doing that. It's, it's up to Catherine on how she uses it. It will definitely help enhance her profile, right? But my main objective is that whatever Catherine does is to help the people so that they can deliver a speech uh, if they have to in front of a conference or something, right? Now, if somehow, if Catherine is the person that it helps uh, enhance a profile, then that's that's part of doing the show. That's what she gets out of coming on to your show. Remember, this is Julie's show. You come on Julie's show because you want your profile to be enhanced. I don't see it as a show. Uh, I have to think about that. Because otherwise, otherwise, it'll leave your audience uh, confused. Like, why is she doing the show? Because it'll. It also the interview is not going to come across as somebody who's trying to. Because remember, your relationship with Everett is outside the show. Once it's a show, Everett is coming there to help your audience. That's what I'm saying. Otherwise, the show is going to lose its focus on why you're doing the show. 
So like, let's say if I came on to your show and saying I'm, I have invited Jay Oza to help people with public speaking, the way you deal with me on the show is completely different than the way you deal with me outside the show. When, when, when I'm on your show, your, your focus is to help your audience, not, and if it helps my profile, that's great. That's up to me, right? That's why I'm coming on your show. But you're being faithful to your audience. Otherwise, what will happen is your interview is going to come across as very subservient, you know, like, oh, my God, I have to do him a favor. You don't need to do anybody a favor. They're coming on to, to do it because it'll help them. They have something to say, and you're providing a, 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 a sort of like a platform for them to get their message out. Because uh, that that because like for example, the speech talk live, we've been pretty faithful. We've we've stuck to the focus of something to do with speech, something some aspect of speech. We don't suddenly bring in people to talk about something that's totally unrelated to public speaking. So that's what I was saying, that the main thing that I would suggest you do is find out what is the purpose of the show, and then you invite appropriate guests that will help the audience who are watching the show. Because otherwise, it will be difficult for you to market the show. Yeah, I'm not concerned about marketing the show. I have to think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. think about that yeah. because... Uh, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll come to you because I'm not saying that you... Yes, my, my goal was actually to take this, it's, it's essentially a workshop for people to create, uh, to get the message out. So this is actually more like a hatching ground for people to become visible. So it's kind of like, second, you know, um, I want to do both. I want to... Um, I, I have to think about that, so I'll just say... Um, I want to invite people who are just emergent, you know, people who have really good ideas, but they're not famous yet, because otherwise, why would they talk to me, right? If they're really famous, they go to do tech talks, right? No, they, 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 that's not necessarily true, because again, it all depends on who your audience is, and if they want to reach out to that audience, uh, you don't worry about why people come on to your show. That's not your concern. Your concern is that you have an audience that you want to keep pushing out the content that's relevant to them. Like, I don't really care who watches my speech talk live show. I think as long as we have a, a I mean, a lot of it is like, uh, part of it is uh, doing more marketing and coming up with a better website and all that. But as far as remaining faithful to the show, I think uh, we've been pretty faithful to the show We're providing like this, this thing on confidence, competence grid, that's a pretty useful content, right? That's a very good content out there if somebody wants to go deep into it. So again, these things take time, Julie. It's not like uh, you, right. do, you, you do right. one show. So I'm just saying that if you start with, a, so you can tweak things here and there, but like I said, you gotta have a clear focus. Like I think you do have a focus that everybody you invite has to help your audience with those things, that how do they become healthy, happy, and successful. So that means you're going to invite people on your show that are going to help, that are going to be focused on that, not on something else. Right. That's a great idea. So you, you, can, you already have, I think, a lot of people that you have in mind, like Everett is one of them. So that means that the show you do, they have to know that this is my show, and I want you to focus on, otherwise what will happen is they can have their, they can't bring their agenda to your show. The show is what it is. And it has to fit into your overall objective. Okay. So That's very helpful. Thank you. I, I have to kind of, I think, I think, I think this is very helpful, but I'm going to have to have to, I don't just want to get it at the intellectual level. I have to, change my perspective so yeah 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 no, i think uh, uh I, I would say that uh, that's because remember that workshop that we did with catherine i can't air that because that's not that helpful to people that's very private right but, i think this this one is in the goal is i i understand what you're saying it helps it's also presenting people to my audience presenting resources that these people have resources to the audience. Does Everett have any videos on YouTube right now? No. So this would be his first uh, introduction, being coming on your show. 
Yes. Right. Yes. right. A lot of people will be like that, but I really. Um, So that's going to that's that's the area you want, that's your niche that people that have right. uh, people, people that who have some message but they don't know how to get it out there. So uh, I actually, honestly, I think eventually it will be a consulting service I could um, charge people for, you know, an online course I can develop. Right. So, like this whole idea of bio and branding, branding bio. Okay, identity. so I think I think what you're doing is something different than what I thought. What you're saying, yeah, is, yeah. What, you, what you're doing is saying, okay, this is a service that I'm going to provide, and the end of it, I do an interview with you, so that way you're now ready to go out and do more interviews with other people. Yes. Okay, so that's different. Yes, I mean you'll still be. I'll still do a show, but the purpose of the show is really to feature the people I'm speaking with. But the topic will still be related to. Yes, health, okay. happiness, and success. Yes, the people, the people I bring in, they'll have like a service, and but what I'm focusing is how do their service help people to be happy, healthy, and successful. So that's that's my area of focus. So, so let's say you have every. I mean, I could be wrong. I really need to think about. Right. So here's way. another thing. So let's say you have. Because I think that's a different. Uh, uh, okay, that's that's we have to think about that. But let's yeah, say you had you had everything. Uh, it was jarring to me. So it's good that we're talking a little bit. So, so let's say you had Everett on your show. Okay. So let's say I'm Everett. What do people? So I would be coming on your so let's say I'm Everett. My objective of coming on your show is so that I have a interview video out there that I can then point people to. Right. Okay, so you're part of their marketing strategy. Yes. Okay, so that's different. Okay, okay. So see I, I was under the impression that they were coming on your show because you have a show that focuses on this, and they're just providing you content that other people out there are interested in. But what you're saying is your objective is not that. Your objective is to help these people have an interview video that's part of their a marketing video. Yes, and then that's uh, eventually that's why I that's a service I'll be selling to. So it's so that, entrepreneurs, that entrepreneurs. Who would like to have an online presence? So, so then your whole show is essentially more like an infomercial. Uh, because, because if, let's say, if I came on your show, I'm coming on your show essentially to promote myself, not to promote your show. Like, see, what I'm saying is, I'm coming to promote myself. Yes. But in your case. You are making an infomercial, like you know, you've seen those commercials where people will yeah. say, "So, what do you yeah, think?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, you, a, yeah, I guess so. That, and that's that's, that, 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 that's what you're doing. You're doing a one-hour infomercial where they get to talk about what they want yeah, to do. Yeah, maybe and, it's only thirty minutes. We don't know. I mean, I'm thinking it's thirty minutes to an hour. It doesn't have to be an hour long. Okay. You know. Yeah. So I think that's what. So you're okay. So what I thought you were trying to do is different from what you really want to do. What you're doing is that I want to provide this as a service, and at the end of it, I help them create their message and everything, and then help them then do an interview uh, that they can then use it uh, as a promotional video to send it out to their followers, saying, "Hey, you can check me out on this. I I did an interview with Julie. Here's an interview that I did, which is essentially." It's not really an interview for your show. It's more of an interview so that they can sh show what they can help other yes. people do. Okay. Yes. All right. That's not a bad idea either. That's not a bad idea. But that's different from what I originally thought you were trying to do. But I like what you said too. But I, I think, yeah, I think my. You people, may have two shows here. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The I think the people I initially I'm servicing is the people who needs an identity. And they actually, uh, I think I can charge money for that and make money. Right. You know? I, I think I think Julie, you have two shows here. The oh, one no, show. Just... <laughs> no, no, let me just finish. Okay. One show is for people that are already established. 
Mm-hmm. These are the people that come on your show to to basically talk about two things. The main thing is to talk about they are res- somehow viewed as an expert on how to for people to remain to become healthy, happy, and successful. So these are people who could already have a book out, and maybe they're not like you know they're appearing on Oprah's, but they need they need a way to pr- promote themselves. But they're promoting thing that you want. That's your core message: is how for for people to be healthy, happy, and successful. So these people, you don't need to do a lot of coaching. They already know how to do all this. They've written a book. You just do a quick like, here's what I want to interview on, and you want to come on my show, and they come on the show, and you basically they promote their work. You got yourself a content, and that is a show. Okay. There's a second thing is different. Is basically you're trying to create an <coughs> commercial for people who are trying to establish themselves. Yes, and that's what I'm saying. That there's a, like two parts here to what you're doing. Right. So the one part is always that. So the, the visibility part is the one where you have your show, where you bring on people that are already established. Like let's say they've written a book, but they're not like well known. They'll come on your show. Believe me, they will come on your show. Right. To me, that's the same thing. The speaker centric. Okay. I, I I get what you're saying. I think that's all I can take in for now. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, look, you're thinking about it, so that's how it starts, right? So yeah. This is how, but it seems like you're giving a lot of talk. So I think that what what because what I understood was that you are basically bringing people that are already established and they have already written a book or they got some kind of practice going and they you want to basically uh have them come on the show not only as a way to promote themselves but also to help your audience around yes. these three areas yes they are establishing their practice they're just not 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 well known so right. they're, they're they're experts in their field but they just don't have an online presence right but when you but if you have to coach them on how to come across then that's a different then then that's a service you're providing Yes. There's a difference between doing an also, interview. Yes, and also provide them, them with the publicity afterwards. Let's talk about that. Let me. Okay. Um, so let me just go. That's a lot of great ideas. So let me just say with Everett, I, I'm going to basically, this is what I see is, first of all, I know what he wants to talk about, but what I'm trying to do is develop a, a, a process, right, a methodology. So the, it's a four-step method process. The first one is preparation, talk to the person, get a sense of what the agenda is. Secondly, uh, establish the agenda. Second step, do a dress rehearsal, you know, just to go through it. Um, and then the third one is do the taping. And I appreciate what you're saying that it's still my product, but they can get a copy of it. And I have the right to release it. And the fourth one is uh, <clears throat> um, the production piece where I release it. They can choose not to release it, but I'll have some me- uh, areas to release, and they can have the gutter copy and a post mortem. So those are the four steps. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think you need to. Do- I think you already documented some of this, but I, I need to. Yeah, it's I th- not documented. I, th- I think it's once you do it, I think once you do it. See, I think <clears throat> so. So with with okay, so there are two kinds of guests you have. One are people that you're just going to send them that here's what I want to cover in the show, uh, and we can do a I, either you can do by email or you can yes. talk to me, and yeah. they can come on the show. You don't need to do a lot of prep work with them. But right. then there are others who really, really don't have a platform where they have. Because one of the things that I've read, in fact, this was on Huffington Post. I'll send you a link. They found, mm-hmm. okay, here's another thing you should know. They found that the best way to sell a book is to do an interview show. Mm-hmm. This, guy has, this guy named Berkowitz, I forgot his first name, Harry Berkowitz or something, and Bob Berkowitz. And he's written that if you want to sell a book, then you better have a because in fact I'm actually doing what you just suggested, but I'm not going to be coaching this person. He has written a book about India, something about India innovation or something, uh-huh. and uh, and I will be doing a show with him just so that he has an interview show that he can use to promote his book. Oh, great! I can see it though, right? You'll share that 
Yeah, yeah. That's yeah cool. I mean, it, it's it's different because I, I, it's it's a topic because he's gonna send me the book, and uh, I was going to include you, but it's not related to speech. No, so no, no. That's one, fine. For yeah. This one, I will I will just do it myself. Uh, yeah. No, it, don't don't feel like you need to. But I'd love to see it. Right. If it was a speech related, then F definitely. But this has nothing to do with speech. This is like I'm kind of like uh, doing it as so, just like what you are as a as a part of a practice. Right. And and I'm trying to uh, sh show that uh, that I have a range besides uh, talking about public speaking. But this one will be specific about uh, he's written a book about uh, India innovating or something like that. I haven't gotten his book yet. So that once sounds I get... great. I think there's a lot of books out like that. Yeah, there so, are a lot of books out there. That's yeah. why I, want, I wanted to ask him, like, you know, why this book? <laughs> right. So, um, so um, that's great. So this is what I'm thinking is I'm the I'm the moderator, ever or whoever's the interviewee. Yeah. And anytime you want to come on, you will be the expert on public speaking. Yeah. And I might bring in another sometimes I'll bring an expert in the subject area that they're talking about. Not yeah. always. It, but with ever, with ever, I'm the subject expert. Yeah, you. Know, so. It's it's your show, and whoever you bring on, you have to ask, tell them what you're bringing them on for. Right. So that's telling just, you that. They could be just. They could be just part of the panel if they have. Like sometimes you may just want a panel, uh, just so the person feels like he's talking to more than one person, right. and and then you will basically give me the cue saying, so so Jay, do you have any questions? So that way. You're controlling the show, the flow of the show. Right, right. Okay. But you may just say, I need somebody to come on as a panelist, and I can come on just as a panelist, not as a subject matter expert. Okay. And you can, I, mean, I could be an expert, but tell them that as part of my panel, I have Jay here. Jay's expertise is on public speaking, and I've included him on the panel today. Like that, you know? Or, or sales or whatever. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Or right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You have to sell me. You have to sell Perfect. me on the show. <laughs> You're okay. the host, remember. If you're getting me on the show, you better get me a few gigs from that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, okay, that sounds great. Um, so, with Ever, he hasn't gotten back to me, he, um, but I have a few other people lined up. One of them is, uh, uh, her name is Sue Kelly. She lives in Stanford, and she's starting her own business in... Um, so, so Julie, let me say one thing. Here's the thing: to get you started, okay, to get you started, this might yeah. be a good way to practice. Why don't you do the first interview with me? Oh, and then, and you then, want me to interview you? Yeah, yeah. Do with okay. me. Forget, forget Everett and other people right now. First interview. What I'm currently coming up with my book, right? Perfect. So uh, once I send you the draft, take a look at it, and then. Uh, you will do the first interview with me, so then you can send that to other people and saying like, "This is how my interview works." Like perfect, that. perfect. Okay. I'd love to interview. So that way you're not. So that way you're not trying to like. Uh, I just thought about. it. I said like, "Why are you wasting time with Everett?" Because with Everett, you should tell him this is what the show looks like. Are you interested? Rather than trying to. Uh, so that way you don't have to. Right now, I think you're trying to do too much work, and I'm saying it'll be much easier to use me as an example and saying that here's Julie's show. And you'll have to set it all up, and then mm -hmm. I will come on your show, and you can do an interview and say, "Jay, so uh, you know, thank you for coming on my show." You know, we'll work on that, and yeah. we'll do a dress rehearsal. Okay, so I think, perfect. I think I think the first we'll thing do, is we'll do the same thing. We'll have a discussion to set the agenda, mm -hmm. and then we'll have a dress rehearsal, and then we'll do the yeah. show. Yeah. So what I have to do? I'll release it for you. Okay. So here's the agenda. I have to first uh, send you the draft. And okay, the show, send the me show, the draft and then so, we'll, we'll have so a the meeting. Because I will use it. I will use the interview as a way to promote myself, right? That right. I've, and you're going to have to come up with a name for your show, the Julie Wu Finkelstein right. hour or something like that, or something like that. you got to come up with the show. And this is part of being healthy, happy, and successful. So it kind of uh, for, it jives with what you're doing. Right. And tell them for this part, I'm going to bring in this guest who will help you how you can develop your skill. And you have to pretend like you don't know me, <laughs> like you don't. You only know me no, as a. No, no, I can know you, but I can present you as though from the scratch. Right, and then you yeah, can no just, uh, and then we'll work out the. So let's do that because that'll also Perfect. help. Perfect. So because why don't you send me the book? Let's set a date. When are you sending me the book? Probably by the end of this week. 
Okay, so mid July. Uh, so a week after you send me the book, we'll have the prep meeting. I can already tell you some of the questions that I can even send you ahead of time. That yeah, you can send, send me send me your agenda. And then you can take those questions and you can do the follow up from that. Yes, well, I'll put together a, a real a real agenda, which includes uh, me introducing the program, me introducing you. And then going into the questions and then a recap. Yeah, because I like to know how I'm coming across too. Because, uh, like, I, I see myself on Speech Talk Live, and a lot of times I'm I want to talk about my book, but it's like I'm I'd like to have somebody ask me those questions. That's so great. That okay. would be perfect. All right, sounds good. Yeah. I'll so. Um, so you will send me the book and you will send me the questions and then I'll send you agenda and then we'll meet on the I'll agenda. send you like 10, 10 questions and then you can take them or add I'm only going to do three to five. Oh, just three to five? <laughs> but send me 10. You know, some of them may be sub-questions. Because know? remember, uh, we'll talk about how to format the show because a lot of yeah. people I don't even I, know. I don't, you know, I rather do, for example, two 30-minute shows rather than one one-hour show, because no one watches the show for a whole hour. Oh, you'll but be surprised. You'll be even, surprised. Even with Google Talk, you know, I think I take multiple sessions. No, actually, you know what? I, I take that back. I actually, it, it all depends on how interesting the show is. Like, I listen to certain podcasts by Tim Ferriss. They mm -hmm. go on for two and a half hours. Oh, okay. And then there is that lady, uh, Krista something. She has she puts her show on iTunes in two format. One is raw, and the other one is uh, production, produ produ uh, something like uh, like they, they produce it. And I always tend to listen to her raw tape because that to me is more insightful. So it all depends on individual. Okay. Well, okay. I don't want to do anything more than an hour long. So let's yeah, say yeah. no. Hour let's is say, about it. Hour is about it. Yeah. Okay. Let's say thirty minutes to an hour. We can flow with that. Because sometimes thirty minutes goes. goes too quickly. Because uh, so much. So when I see thirty right. minutes I between the like, introduction and all, right, that. it just feels like you're just kind of rushing the audience. It's like I'm just coming on to just like it's like a hit and run type, and I don't like that. You know, like right. when right. comes on. Because yeah. when you write a book that's 200 pages, there's a lot more. So your job as an interviewer is to get more that's not in the book. That's the whole point. Right? Right. The book is just allowing me to get on your show. But now I'm on the show, you have to draw me out more as like what is actually going on here, you know? Right. Let's, uh, okay, that sounds great. Let's do it. And, I, All right. and uh, I think I have a list of people who want to do it. I think I'll do three for free and then see what happens. So, 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 what, so the way... My thing would work is then then you can say, by the way, here is the show I have done with this particular author, and then you can send right. it out to people. So that will help you get more guests. Right. And I have uh, two uh, Google Plus communities. One of them is entrepreneurial, another one is Kosora. And together, there are over 100,000 people. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, so you got a pretty. Well, so I, you get a I mean, those are public, they're not mine. But even uh, my uh, community for public speaking, that's like your audience, I have over 500 people subscribed there. Right, so you will take me and just try different things like putting on this page, that page, that page, like you've been doing, right. and then you can say, this is what, this is the value that I bring to you, like that. Exactly. Okay. Let's talk on that, because LinkedIn plus possibly, you know, so. Okay, Julie, I'll let you Thank go then. Thank you. Okay, bye, thanks. Bye.